Get your hymn books and turn to page 413, just over in the glory land. We'll sing verses 1 and 4, page uh, 413, just over in the glory land. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. 413, just over in the glory land. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. All right, everybody stand up and sing out. I'm a home where the saints are. Thank the Lord for his blessings. We had a good service this morning. We did have quite a few sick and out and some out of town and some uh, just having a tough time getting out of the house like my mother. Please pray for her. Uh, she is better from the problem that hospitalized her, but now she's having a hard time with the medicine and reactions to that and just having pain. So please keep her in your prayers. I know you will. And we've got many others to pray for. I uh, had a preacher friend text me, a uh, good brother um, from down around Fayette, Brother Terry Oswald. And uh, I don't even remember the name of his church, Brother Jeff. Uh, Wyndham Springs. Wyndham Springs Baptist Church. Good brother, Brother Terry. And he said to pray for his nephew, Ben Oswalt. Uh, he is a Marine, and he's in Afghanistan right now. So let's remember Ben Oswalt, a Marine in Afghanistan. We all lift him up to the Lord, ask God's blessing and protection on him. Uh, Carrie Borgman is sick, so please pray for Carrie. Um, please pray. For Melissa, she's going to get her second uh, shot, the block in her back. So she's going to mar for that. Please pray for her. Shawanda Terrell went this afternoon, and she's tested positive for COVID. So please be with Shawanda. She doesn't feel real bad, the indications that she gave me. she got a little bit of a fever. She's just not uh, 100%. So just pray that she'll have light symptoms. Please keep praying for Miss Patricia Henderson. Please keep her in your prayers. Um, Miss Tina, ask us to pray for her granddaughter, Autumn. Her granddaughter, Autumn. So let's remember Miss Tina's uh, granddaughter, Autumn. And uh, Brantley, you said it's po positive on COVID, so let's pray for Brantley. And uh, I've got good news, two of my friends, two of my good friends I've known for years, both had COVID, and uh, one went home with oxygen, and he's now off of the oxygen and doing a lot better, and another one has had COVID for three or four, two or three weeks, I think, and he got admitted to the hospital this week, but he's now, from what I understand, he was going to go home yesterday, so praise God for that. That's, that's wonderful. Um, we had some other prayer requests. Please pray for uh, some families that are grieving. Uh, asked this morning the Norman Terrell family and the Brenda Oswald family.
family, Brenda Oswald family. Remember these. Uh, pray also for my wife's cousin, Mike Shelby. Hannah Jones, that's Josh Jones's wife, started treatments um, Friday. So please pray for her. And I'm looking over my list. Please pray for the nursing homes, our local nursing homes. Been asked to pray for them. Um, and I may have overlooked something. Please continue to pray for Brother Waits and for Roger. Please pray for both of them, uh, Brother Waits and for Roger. And do you have a prayer need other than unspoken? What about unspoken? All right, a lot of them. Any others? Okay, yes. All right, is she in a hospital? Do you know where? Okay. Well, let's remember Casey in prayer. You had your hand up. Yes. Could you spell his name for me? All right. Right. All right, Brenton Braswell. Know the hand. Okay. Yes. Satan. RSV and strip. Brother Marcus. Yes, sir. At your meeting, were there any proposed bills? Yeah. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. I have a personal friend, good friend, the state senator. And also, I have another good friend, the state representative. So let me know anything. I, no, but I, I actually know a few more that I'm not as close to, but I, I know some that I'm very close to. I can text them, call them, whatever. So let me know. I'd like to help. Amen. Please, hey, if y'all do not have a new prayer sheet, our prayer sheet at the back includes the names of our nine Supreme Court justices. We name them. We're going to put that in there every week and uh, pray for God to work in their lives, their hearts, and pray that when cases get before them, that they'll rule the right way, that God would lead them in that. So their names are right on the opening, right at the bottom. So you lift those names up to God. Yes. Amen. And you know what? That is amazing. All the new technology, all the new knowledge that's coming about, DNA and everything, oh my, we need to push that, especially with the newer ultrasounds that are 
they're so good the, the 4d and all that so it's amazing amen You say this Friday night, this Saturday night, okay? Well, let's pray for that. Well, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we just ask you to advance these things that we're speaking about. And God, as a nation, we need to repent of sin. And uh, God, we need to press forward as Christian soldiers in prayer and believing that uh, things are, are going to be advanced even in the legislation, God. And and even in the, the ruling of the Supreme Court, we just pray these wicked uh, laws will be overturned that are not from you, that are not godly, they're not from the Word of God. They're, they're just men's uh, thoughts, and, and that's some of what we're going to preach about tonight, God. We ask you to please uh, bless the Alabama right to life. We pray, God, that the proper legislation we get advanced in the next session. God, we lift up these that are sick among us, be with Shawanda. Please be with Carrie right now. Uh, God, be with Brantley. We ask you to be with Autumn. And uh, Lord, we pray that you please be with uh, uh, Dylan, uh, who fell and, and broke his wrist and elbow. Uh, God, please be with Sadie. We pray, God, for Brother Oswalt's nephew, uh, Ben. Put a hedge of protection about him. God, we ask you to be with Casey right now and her baby. And, uh, Lord, we pray for Miss uh, Melissa tomorrow in the, the trip to Tuscaloosa. Please, God, bless my mother, and we pray for healing in her body. And, God, please ease her pain. We know right now, God, you can bring that easing of pain. We pray for you to bless Miss Patricia. Please be with her, God, and, and we just pray for, for you to, to do great and wonderful things. We lift up Brenton. Uh, please put a hedge around Brenton Braswell. And please keep him safe. Uh, Lord, we ask you to bless and be with us in, in the service tonight. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, get your hymn books and uh, turn to page 360, I believe. Yeah, 360, there is a fountain, page 360. And we're going to sing just uh, verse 1 and 4. All right, we're going to sing verses 1 and then just verse 4. All right, page 360, there is a fountain. We'll sing verses 1 and then verse 4. All right, page 360, there is a fountain, uh, verse 1 and then verse 4. All right, stand up and sing out. be seated. Hey, hope you'll uh, take that bulletin and uh, look at the, uh, the faces of those two men and you'll, you know, you could even clip this out and put it somewhere at your home and just lift up these two men to God. 
And we need to do that tonight in prayer. Pray for Brother Chris Dallas and Brother Jeremy Smith. God's hand to be on them. And that this meeting would not just be a series of four days, but God would do some great things. And you know what? We need to believe that God's able to do that. Amen. And just trust him to do that. Uh, let me mention there's two things on the back table. Let me mention these two things. We will be starting our patch club again and renewing our patch club. And the patch club will meet on Wednesday nights starting September the 8th. And Miss Maddox will be the leader. We do have some folks who are trying to line up to be her helpers. And uh, any of the young people that get here early, and early would be anything before 7 they get here at a quarter till or ten till, whatever. She's going to let them know week by week that she'll have a few games and things going in the dining hall. Keep them entertained. They'll come over here at 7. We'll do our opening song with the organ, piano, and everything, our opening song and prayer. And then our patch club will go to the patch room, and they'll meet while we're doing the Bible study. And i got quite a few young people. We've got a list of about 20 right now we're trying to, to get them involved in the Patch Club. Will you pray for the Patch Club? If you know anybody, K-5 through 6th grade, uh, they can go to the Patch Club, K-5 through 6th grade, and uh, use this flyer, give it to them, distribute it. Also on the back table, we have our sign-up cards. I encourage everybody to get them. And uh, friend day, Sunday morning, testimony night, Sunday night, someone special night, someone special to you. Try to get them here on Monday night, ladies night, Tuesday night. I've got about ooh, 30, 35 preachers I'm trying to invite for Monday and Tuesday night. Um, put together a little preacher's power pack we're going to give them. I'm excited about that. Uh, youth night, Wednesday night. I love what some of the young people call these bounce houses whenever we have them. They call them the bouncy houses. <laughs> so we're going to have the bouncy houses on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. And we're also working on some other things. We've got some people lined up to face paint. I told them I wanted them to paint me a mask on me so I don't have to wear one. All right. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm just kidding. But we're going to do that. And uh, working on, we're going to try to do a, a little meal, a little small meal up at the gym, maybe hot dogs and drinks and stuff like that. And uh, working on some other things. But I love, boy, I tell you, I love it. If you want to come look at it, this is an outstanding book. I love the size of it. It's a, and I'll just tell you, it's got all the important information in it, 291 pages. And it even has at the back, about 10 pages of notes you can write down. This is an outstanding book. Go right alongside your Bible. God dealt with me about a particular thing the other day, and I went to that opening. And what it is, I love the way they designed this book. When you go to a topic, you open it up, and the verses are always the same on every opening. Like right there, love in the Bible. It's an opening. And you got about 10 verses, and you got the complete King James verses. And then you've got about 15 references at the end you can look up to if you want to study the Bible. And as I said this morning, 154 different subjects. That's amazing. And it's right there in your hands. Uh, I love it. It's, a great, it's called Bible Answers for Every Need. Now, here's what we're going to do. Every adult visitor that comes on Sunday morning, it's Sunday morning, every adult visitor gets one of these. And then whoever got them here gets one. Okay? Amen? The adult visitors, and this is a handy little thing for somebody that's just starting in church and they don't know. It is amazing. And it's all King James Version. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, adult visitors, Sunday morning only. All the time we're going to do it, Sunday morning and then those who bring them Sunday morning. And then I talk about priming the pump this morning. Brother Marcus, I talk about priming the pump. We want these cards to be filled out and brought back in. 
And what I'm going to do, as I said, I've got a wonderful, wonderful gift certificate here. And you don't have to go to Timbuktu to spend it. You don't have to go to Birmingham or Tuscaloosa or Huntsville. It's a local gift certificate. Nice. First five people to get cards in the, in the box. Neil could turn in 200 tomorrow cards. He's just one person. There's four more, okay? First five people. And, it, and no matter how much the cards they, they get, one person's going to be drawn out out of those five. You would love this, I'm telling you. I'm trying to get my wife motivated, amen? You would love this. You need to go out and sign you some people up, amen? I've already got people committed. I, I haven't got my cards filled out. I've already got people committed. I've called, I've been on the phone, I've talked to people. I've got people lined up to be here already. I'm going to start filling out some of my cards tomorrow. But I'm not going to count. I'm not going to let me be in this for this uh, certificate. It's, it's all y'all. I'm not counting me. So let's get the pump prime. Let's get some cards turned in. Uh, we need some cards turned in by Wednesday night. Amen. Let's pray. Pray. Now, here's the most important thing out of all this. Let's pray. Let's pray right now for these men. Heavenly Father, we lift up Brother Chris Dallas. What a fine young man. What a wonderful testimony he has. God, he's been used all across our country. And Lord, every time I've heard him preach, he's blessed me, helped me. And God, you be with him and use him in the days he's going to be here. And bless Brother Jeremy. We ask you to bless their families, give them safety, give them protection. And I pray these days they're here. They'd sure be a blessing for all of us. We need you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the only other thing I hadn't mentioned, and just remember this, pray for September the 11th. We'll have another Super Saturday on September the 11th. And don't forget, on Wednesday nights, we've gotten into that Christian warfare. We're going to start looking at the armor on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. I encourage you to be here. Brother Jeff, come and lead us again. Get your handbook. Turn to page 396. Do Lord is a nice little song. It's a song that I sing quite a bit at work and stuff. I hope you're singing them, uh, these songs at work and wherever you're at. But 396, Do Lord will sing the whole song. It says in Psalms 139:17, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. All right, 396, Do Lord will sing uh, both verses. All right, so stand up and sing out. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Kind of wave, everybody. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Do we have any birthdays or any anniversaries? Any birthdays or any anniversaries this week? This is what? August the 22nd through the 28th. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Yes. Wow, that's good. Anniversary, amen. Thank the Lord. Anybody else? Who? Debbie. You weren't even going to tell us. Oh, come on now. 
Bad girl. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, Miss Debbie. Hey, you know what? As we get older, we don't. We're not as excited. You remember when you was a kid? They say, "How old are you?" Uh, you go to the bar. I remember my daddy takes us to the barber shop. And they'd always talk to you in the barber shop. How old are you, son? Well, I'm nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and now they say, how old are you? Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Amen. Happy birthday, Debbie. Let's sing. All right, let's everybody sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, group, let's come up and sing. And um, I'll go ahead and tell you, um, I'm going to eventually get to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. If you want to go ahead and turn there, I'm going to eventually get to 2 Corinthians 10. I'm going to do a little bit of intro before we get there. 2 Corinthians 10. Corinthians 10, as I said on Wednesday night, nights, we are getting into the Christian warfare section of Ephesians, and honestly, the message I gave this morning, and what I'm going to do tonight, is part of the Christian warfare, and what I'd like to do, what I planned on doing, 
was preaching a message, when I started writing down all the notes and the verses and the thoughts that God had given me, I realized quickly that I couldn't preach it all in one service. And so I decided the best thing to do was to give what I gave this morning and then give what I'm going to give tonight from 2 Corinthians 10. So what I, I'm going to do right now, I want to have prayer, but I'm going to take about five minutes to just review what I gave this morning, not just for the benefit of those who may not have been here, because there are a few people here that were not here this morning, but also to refresh th those of you who were here, refresh you what was said this morning, because what I, what I gave this morning is really a foundation for what I'm going to give you tonight. So let's pray, let's ask God to use this. I'll just give you a testimony. It's already been a blessing to me, especially what I'm going to give you tonight. I've been using this personally for a while and I've uh, been asking God in prayer to do some of these things. And not just for people I know that are close to me, but for a lot of people. And one of the things I'm going to say tonight, as you pray about strongholds in other people's lives, you may not know all of the strongholds. But here's something I believe. I believe if you walk with God, the Holy Spirit will show you what the strongholds are. He'll reveal them to you. You say, preacher, you sound spooky. No, I just believe God. We had an unbelievable situation happen here yesterday, right here on our property. And I won't get into all the details, but uh, there was a young lady out in, the rainstorm, in a rainstorm, and we don't know what was wrong with her. But I was making some visits here in Gew, and I was going to come by and do some things here at the church, and I was actually going to come by the church first and then go make some visits. But the Holy Spirit was strong and said, no, go make your visits first and then go by the church. And the Lord allowed me to be here when that young lady was out in our parking lot in a downpour. And the chief of police and I was able to have prayer with her and try to talk to her and help her. She got some help. I pray she got some help. But if you let the Holy Spirit lead you and direct you, he will show you what you need to pray for. So let's pray right now. Lord, we ask you tonight as we bow before you to give us your anointing, your help. We pray, Lord, that you would please lead and guide the words we give. And God, this is not something we just believe because we've read it somewhere or someone told it to us. God, we believe the Spirit of God has given this to us and the Word of God teaches this. And so, Lord, I pray that you please give us Clarity and help tonight, and please, God, bless as we give these further truths about intercession and prayer for those that are away from God and those that are unsaved. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I started in Mark 11, and you don't have to turn there, but I gave you the title of the message this morning. I felt like I needed to compartmentalize what I was going to say, so I gave the title for the message this morning, a certain title for this morning. I'm going to give you a different one for tonight. Believing God and interceding. And I, I really truly believe if we start out interceding for others, and that's what I'm talking about. I, I showed you this morning what is intercession. Intercession is a go-between. You've got a lost soul over here. You've got a prodigal over here. You've got somebody away from God over here. And you've got the God of eternity over here. And the Bible, throughout the Bible, the Bible asks us to intercede to intercede for all men, Paul said. And we are interceding on their behalf for, for them to God. And, of course, remember the Ezekiel verse where Ezekiel pleaded for someone to stand before me and there was not an intercessor. We gave you the Mark 11 verse, how that Jesus said, don't be so surprised that God does things. If you'll not doubt in your heart, but believe in your heart, God will do things and he will answer prayer. And uh, the Lord desires to save people. We said this this morning, the Lord desires to save people 
more than we do. Uh, when Jesus was there at the, wo the woman at the well and the disciples came back, he said, I have meat to eat you know not of. And Jesus said, I had, I'd much rather see somebody get saved than eat. Now, I don't know about y'all, I like eating, amen. I love, I, I'm, I really like food. But Jesus said, I'd rather, much rather see somebody get saved than eat. So he cares so much for our loved ones. We said this morning, I'm just going to give you the three things we said this morning, and then I'm going to go on to, we'll, we'll look at 2 Corinthians 10. If you haven't turned there yet, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 10. This morning we gave you from 2 Corinthians 4, number one, that Satan blinds. Satan blinds. He has a smoke screen up. He blinds those who are not right with God. He blinds the unsaved and not being able to understand the gospel and spiritual truth. He puts up a smoke screen of lies. He does this in many ways. And tonight we're going to show you some of those ways. The Bible calls a lot of the things that binds people strongholds. And we'll look at strongholds tonight and actually what the Bible means when it uses the term strongholds. There's a, there's a, a meaning to it. I want, I want you to see it. So Satan blinds, he hides spiritual truth. And you remember this morning I told you this, if you ever wondered about people who are not right with God or maybe somebody that's not saved and you plead with them, you beg God to save them, you, you talk to them about the Lord. And I know some of you know people like this. You, you, they're on your heart. They burden you. And you go to your private place with God and you say, God, why do they not see? They don't see because Satan blinds. I gave you this, number two. Pride is the great enemy, maybe the number one enemy of people not getting right with God, pride. Remember, pride is what brought Lucifer's downfall. He wanted to be lifted up above God. Pride was what brought down Eve and Adam. You may be like God's. That sin of pride to be lifted up. And I will not bow the knee to God. I will not submit pride. So we pray down the blinders. We pray down the pride in people's lives. Remember what I gave you this morning about the prodigal son. He only came home. He only got right with God because he came down to the very bottom. And pride was eliminated. When he hit rock bottom, there was no more pride. There was so much no more pride that he said, I don't even have to be a son. I just go home. And I, when I see him, I'm going to say to Dad, I don't even have to be a son anymore. Just let me work as a hired servant. Pride was gone. Pray down the blinders. Pray down pride. And number three, we showed you the verse in Acts 16. When pride is broken, we need to pray for God to open hearts. Nobody ever gets right with God unless they open their heart to God. That Philippian jailer, after the earthquake, thought he was going to die, was going to fall on his sword, kill himself. What must I do to be saved? God opened his heart. What must I do to be saved, Paul? I mean, he, he'd been listening to Paul and Silas in there singing and praising God. Why in the world them dumb preachers in there singing and praising God? And they're in shackles. You know, God can use anything, can he? Amen. That's another thing we don't ever need to forget. God can use anything. God, you use whatever you need to use to get a hold of that precious one. And so tonight, let's look at these verses in 2 Corinthians. And I've titled this tonight, Praying Down Strongholds. Praying Down Strongholds. Let's read, let's read 3, 4, and 5. 3, 4, and 5. For though we walk in the flesh, watch it, we do not war after the flesh. Here. Paul's saying, get ready. What I'm about to tell you, you're not going to understand if you don't understand this is a spiritual 
warfare. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of illustration tonight about real warfare, but please don't, don't make any mistake. This is spiritual warfare. Praying down strongholds. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that means of the flesh, but mighty through God to the pulling down. And if you underline in your Bible, underline the words pulling down. Pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of strongholds. And in a moment, we'll define what is a stronghold. Casting down, and we're going to look at three words tonight in verse 5 that describe a different aspect of strongholds. We'll look at these three words in verse 5. Casting down imaginations. That's the first one we're going to look at, the word imaginations. And every high thing, that's the second thing we're going to look at tonight, the high things that exalt themselves against God, that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Now, you'll know in a minute what a high thing is because a high thing will always exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Now, these are just sort of a different way of looking at all kinds of strongholds. They, they each have their own uh, characteristic, and, 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 and a stronghold can have all three of these. It can have the imaginations, the high things, and then thirdly, and bringing in, into captivity every thought. Now, that, well, the third thing we're going to look at now is thoughts. To the obedience of Christ. The obedience of Christ. First tonight, let's look at the weapons. The weapons. This morning I gave you two weapons. You remember the two weapons I gave you this morning? The Word of God and prayer. And those weapons are found in Ephesians 6. They're found in other places in the Bible. I'm going to give you two more tonight. Now, I think our chief weapon we're going to look at tonight, the chief weapon I'm going to preach about tonight is prayer. Praying down the strongholds. But the Word of God is also a very strong weapon. For when that person gets to the point to where the pride has been crushed, the heart has been opened, now the Word of God needs to go in. Now the Word of God needs to be applied. And that's why it's such a powerful weapon. So you got the weapon of prayer, you got the weapon of the Word of God. And let me give you two more. The weapon of praising God. Every chance we get around everybody we can, we need to praise God. The 23 days my wife and I were in Illinois with our daughter, we prayed every day. We prayed every morning. We prayed every evening. Sometimes we would pray on the way driving, but we prayed every day. And one of the things we prayed for, God, give us opportunities every day to exalt you and to praise you. And no matter what everybody else was talking about, no matter what the doctors were talking about, no matter what the nurses were talking about, no matter what family members were there talking about, we were all about, let's praise God. Let's praise God for what he's done. Let's exalt the Lord. And every time God would answer a prayer, and sometimes in miraculous ways, we saw God answer prayers. We always tried to praise and exalt God. And let me tell you, in your life, if you don't do this, you need to get a lot more used to praising God in everything that happens in your life. Look for God and look for ways to exalt Him and praise Him around everybody. Yeah, I'm talking about around your unsaved family members, those that don't love God. Praise God. Praise Him. Now, don't make up stuff, okay? Don't be a liar. But when God shows you something, you can exalt God and God touches your heart about something. Praise the dear Lord. Amen. Praise Him. And then another weapon. Lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. Do you know why all the liberals and the leftists and the Hollywood kooks they're all for meditation. They're all for Eastern religions. They're all for the Muslims. But they hate the name of Jesus because there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is power. 
power in the name Jesus Christ. The Bible says in his name, in his name only, may people come to the Lord and be saved. It's only through Christ that people come to the Father. The name of Jesus, praising God, prayer, and the Word of God. So let's look at these verses. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Prayer is a long-distance weapon. A lot of time the people we're praying for may not even be in the town we're pr that we're actually doing the praying. You may be praying in 35594 zip code. You may be praying in 35563 zip code. You may be praying in 35570 zip code. They may be states away. It doesn't matter. I was just reading recently, and a lot of you will, will remember what I'm talking about. In 1991, in the first Gulf War, when Iraq invaded Kuwait, and uh, that was really the first war that we could sit and watch on TV and see what was happening. I don't know how many of you remember some of that, but I was fascinated. I would watch these generals come on, and they would show how a bridge or a convoy of the enemy, a smart bomb would come down and just blow it up. I was reading recently, and you know what? I mean, we're talking about pinpoint targeted destruction. Miles away, these smart bombs come in. Boom! <laughs> blow it up. I was reading recently, Brother Jeff, how some of that was done. That's 1991. That was 30 years ago. I, mean, I was 31, and I was sitting there, and I was glued to the TV watching all that. Here's the way they did some of that. They would drop special forces behind the enemy lines. And those special forces would get within a pretty good distance, not far, from these targets, and they had these special lasers they would pinpoint a convoy or they would pinpoint a bridge or they they pinpoint something with that special laser and that smart they were in contact and that smart bomb was launched and it would follow that laser to that point and boom now watch this watch this the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds. Our prayers can target the strongholds that are binding somebody in sin. And those things, can, you say, well, my prayers are not like a smart bomb. And I would agree with you. And I'm going to show you why I'd agree with you. They are and they're not. They are in the fact that you can pinpoint them and you can pray exactly for the stronghold and pinpoint it. But I would say that they're not like a smart bomb because the way God words it here in the pulling down. Have you ever seen these wrecking balls that, that, that tear down a building? Shh, boom, boom, boom. And they just, you know, a, a section of the wall come down, another section of the wall come down. Now, the... The God technology in prayer is every bit as good as a smart bomb, if not better. Because when the Holy Spirit tells you what the, the stronghold is, you can pray from around the world to that person who has a stronghold that's binding them, and you're, that's how pinpoint your prayers can be. But you're probably not going to see the stronghold brought down like the smart bomb did. It's going to be probably more like the wrecking ball. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Every day, boom, boom, boom. And God says to the pulling down of strongholds. Prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. A brick falls a section of a wall falls, and after, long, after a long time, God through prayer brings down that stronghold. 
Now, what's a stronghold? A lot of times people have the wrong idea about a stronghold. A stronghold's not a devil. A stronghold's not a demon. I believe devils and demons can live in strongholds. The word strongholds here means a fortress or a place of dwelling. You know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is a sin or an addictive sin or something that Satan uses to bind someone to keep them from coming to God's knowledge. Let me give you some, what I believe are strongholds, and I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list. I'm just going to give you some. Fornication is a stronghold. Illicit sexual living outside of marriage, living in debauchery, living like the prodigal son lived, where the, other, the brother said he's wasted his substance on harlots. Fornication is a stronghold. Shacking up is a stronghold. Alcohol is a stronghold. Addictive drugs are strongholds. Gambling is a stronghold. I talked to a man a few years ago, and he, he was talking to me, and that man, that grown man was looking at me, Brother Jeff, and he was weeping and crying. He said, I cannot even keep my household together, preacher, because my wife is addicted to gambling. That woman sat and listened to me preach countless times. She's bound by it, preacher. I've, I've had to get loans just to pay off her gambling debts. Deviant sex, homosexuality, any deviant sex, sodomy, that's a stronghold. Nicotine, I believe, is a stronghold. These are places that devils will abide in a person and they will bind that person and hold them and we've got to pray those things down. Now here's the thought and I gave you this thought already but I'm going to give it again. What if you've got a precious loved one and you don't know all their strongholds? Pray for the Holy Spirit to show you. Pray for the Holy Spirit. I believe, I believe as my hand on the Bible the Holy Spirit showed me some strongholds of some people in the last few weeks. I believe God showed and revealed them to me. Let me give you a big stronghold. You may not agree with me. I don't care if you do or you don't, but I believe this is a big one. The devil's satanic music. There's a lot of devilish music out there that people are, they're addicted to it. They're held by this music. And the devils live in it. Let me give you some more. Anger. Some people, they're, they're bound by anger, by rage, by gossip. Gripping sins that grip people are strongholds. And I do, yes, I believe devils and imps live in these strongholds and they say, we're not going to let you go. And the only way some people are ever going to get saved, the only way some people are ever going to get right with God is for us to pray and to pray and to pray and to pray and to pray for those strongholds to be destroyed. Why is it that the prodigal got right? He wasted his substance. All that inheritance, living after whores. He got to a point in his life where he said, I've been living for the wrong thing. You ever heard anybody say this? They woke up. I'm not talking about the new woke. <laughs> Amen. They woke up. They woke up. They smelled the coffee. They said, whoa. My life's a mess. Pray, 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 
pray, boom, pray, boom, pray, boom. God, bring down those addicting strongholds. Bring them down, God. When Jesus stood up to preach the very first time, Brother Jeff, he took the scroll of the book of Isaiah and he opened it up and he said this from Isaiah. He read this scripture in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. And there was a list of things there in Isaiah. But one of those is to preach deliverance to the captives. People are bound. They're captive. We've got to pray and target prayer, target prayer, target prayer. The words pulling down, I looked up, the words pulling down mean to demolish and to bring down with force. God wants us through our prayers, praying for those strongholds to come down. In just a few weeks, we're going to have a brother that's going to preach our revival, Brother Chris Dallas, and he's going to tell you how for years his dear mother prayed for him and that how he would live in alcohol and in drugs and had no concern for his parents and just sort of ran over them and through just a boom, 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 praying, God brought him down. Over and over and over and over and over and over. Now, let's look at those three words in verse 5. Imaginations, high thing, and thoughts. I, and I don't really know how to explain this. I believe a stronghold can have all of these. I believe these are like different ways of looking at what a stronghold can be. The word imaginations, and I know that in our English we don't use it this way, but the word imaginations here means false beliefs. Some people are going to go to hell because they believe in Darwin's theory of evolution. That's an imagination. It's a false belief. Back when the abortion thing started ramping up right after Roe v. Wade and, and people finally woke up and realized what was wrong in the days before a lot of advanced sonograms and technology, uh, the, the old liberals would say, oh, that's just a ball of tissue. You know what that is? That's a lie. That's an imagination. That's wrong. An imagination is a false religion, the Eastern religions. An imagination is, is reincarnation. That's an imagination. Uh, an imagination is belief in, uh, in aliens. <laughs> and and uh, the aliens came down and, and people worshipped aliens. Well, that's crazy. All right. uh, an imagination is perversions, things that are not true. That's an imagination. It is something that the devil has, has brought out that is absolutely not true. We need to target our prayers. God, bring down false, crazy thinking in the mind of my precious loved one or my friend or my, my neighbor or my co-worker. You ever talk to unsaved people and they tell you what they really believe? Some crazy stuff. So preacher, you wouldn't believe what people told me they believe. You go back, you, you do this, boom. That's it right there, imaginations. Casting down imaginations. There's some, and I'm not going to be too plain about this, there are people that I know that will not get saved because they, they watch the History Channel and believe all the junk that comes on when they, they show that stuff about ancient aliens. Now you laugh. I'm not telling you, you laugh. I know people that will not get saved because they believe that stuff. But if they'll get their Bible, they'll open it up, and they'll let God speak to their heart. All that stuff will come down, especially if they've got somebody that loves them that's praying for them. So pray down imaginations. And again, if you don't know what the stronghold is, and, and hey, please, let me say this. Many people are gripped by more than one stronghold. 
I know precious people I love that are gripped by three and four strongholds. You've got to name every one of them. Name them. If you are not naming these strongholds and saying, God, bring them down, you are not loving that person like you need to love them. God, bring it down. Please, God. And look at the second one. Every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Does that remind you of anything I preached this morning? Pride. Strongholds, a lot of times, some people are scared to witness to folks that have a high IQ. I found out people that have high IQs believe a lot of dumb stuff, dumb things. And everybody's this way. Please get this because this will help you in your witnessing. I don't care if a person got a 140 IQ or an 80 IQ. It doesn't matter. When that person gets to the part, to point in their life where they're questioning and they're wanting to know and they're hungering for truth, they're that close to getting saved. I don't care what kind of IQ they got. You can open your Bible. Hey, I, I want a young man to the Lord who had a lot of questions. I went, sat down at his dining room table just a few months ago. He had a lot of questions. And here's what I did. The family was over here. His girlfriend was here and he was here. He had a lot of questions, I, and, and I knew the family and all. And I said, look, here's what I want to do. I just want to be nice and kind and friendly with you, but let me teach you the Bible. You got an open heart? You want to know the truth? Yes, sir, I do. Let me teach you the Bible. Let me teach you what God wants you to know. And when we get to the end of what I want to give you, then you ask me your questions. When I taught him about where sin came from, and what Jesus did when he died on the cross and how he died for our sins and that, how faith is a part of receiving Christ and just showed him how to be saved. I got to that point. I said, do you understand? He said, yes, sir. I said, do you want Christ? Yes, sir. I said, you want him right now? Yes, sir. Now, he had a few questions at the end, but they weren't anything big. When people are ready to be saved, God's brought down some stuff and God's humbled them it doesn't matter what their IQ is. They'll come to the Lord and be saved. That high thing is things that Satan uses that says to them, I will not submit to God. And there is nothing, there is nothing that the devil can come up with that says that it's greater than God, that God cannot bring it down. Amen? Hey, do you believe God's God? Say amen. If God is God and he's the God of this Bible, he can bring it down, and he will. And remember this, Romans 14, every knee shall bow to me. Every knee, every atheist, every agnostic, every God denier, the knee will bow. A lot better if it bows now. And then the third one. Every thought. These are thoughts that Satan brings to people to get them not to accept Christ. You would be amazed of all the crazy, stupid things that have come out in popular culture in the last 20 years that are anti-God. Dungeons and Dragons, Harry Potter. I, I could go on. <laughs> over and over and over. The devil comes up with these thoughts, these thoughts, these video games where people are slaughtering each other and, and blood all over the screen. These are things that Satan is bringing to, to exalt himself and exalt death, glorify death. That's all abortion is, is a glorification of death. These crazy people that out 
marching for abortion and say, you know, we, we worship Satan and death. And there's some, we had, Brother Marcus, we were out there months back. A woman came by and talked so vile to us while we're out there holding the signs. And she, she's just a follower of the devil. And there are a lot of them. But you know what? They're not beyond the reach of our dear Lord. Somebody who loves those people needs to be praying for them. Needs to be praying for God to bring down these strongholds. Hey, false religion. Brother Hahn knows what I'm talking about. The Roman Catholic Church, and she knows what I'm talking about. The Roman Catholic Church has people blinded. It's a stronghold that's keeping people, and they're going straight to hell. It's awful. Every thought, pray for every thought, every binding sin to be brought down. Never quit believing. Never quit praying. Keep, boom, boom. And look, hey, look, here's how our prayers are not like smart, smart bombs. It is not our power. Watch what it says. Uh, it says, the weapons, in verse 4, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, underline this, through God. It is God. It is not the power of my prayers or your prayers. It's me praying and God bringing down the stronghold. Amen. He's the one that does it. I don't think you got that power. You go in your private place and you pray and let God do it. Buddy, when God does it, he knows how to do it. My wife and I were talking about this, a family situation in our family back many, many, many years ago, about 30 years ago or so, with one of her brothers. And how we had prayed for, it. and here's the thing, her precious mama and daddy had prayed, Brother Jeff, I'm talking about Glenn and Betty Shelby, had prayed and prayed and prayed, and prayed, and prayed, and prayed, and prayed. And then God started doing some things. And that brother called and then said, we need to come over. And they came over to Glenn and Betty Shelby's to get right with God. Well, one to get right with God and one to get saved. Don't you tell me it can't happen. If you don't believe what I'm preaching tonight, then you better cut verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5 out of your Bible. Because it can. You ever heard of Howard Cadle, E. Howard Cadle? You ever heard of Cadle's Tabernacle? A lot of people haven't. Oh, B.R. Lakin for years preached at Cadle's Tabernacle. Cadle's Tabernacle was in Cincinnati, Ohio. Let me tell you the story of Howard Cadle. Howard Cadle was born in the 1880s. His mother was a godly Christian. His daddy was a wicked sinner, gambler, and everything that you could be this wrong. And Howard Cadle basically grew up his first 20, 25, 30 years and he decided to follow his dad. The early 1900s, Howard Cadle was known as the king of the slots. Big time in the gambling, corruption, crime syndicate, you name it. Howard Cadle was right in the middle of the most wicked stuff in America. But, you listen to this, he had a godly mother. You know what she did, Miss Stale? Howard Cadle's mother, no matter what happened, she was on her knees at 8 o'clock at night because that's a lot of the time he was in bad stuff. And she just decided she covenanted with God. At 8 o'clock every night, I'm going to be on my knees praying for my boy. And I'm going to tell you, I don't care how old your boy is, he's still your boy. Amen? 
And she was on her knees every night praying for Howard Cable. Oh, God save my boy. True story. One night, Howard Cadle was in an altercation, pulled a gun, was going to shoot a man, and the gun wouldn't fire, and it got knocked out of his hands, and it was 8 o'clock at night. His mama's prayers kept him from murdering somebody. When Howard Cadle was 30 years old, he was told by a doctor, you got six months to live. Howard Cato went to, you fill in the blank, his mother. When he's told he had six months to live, he went to his mother. He fell down at his mother's feet. He said, Mother, I'm a wicked sinner, and I'm going to die and go to hell. And his sweet, godly mother opened up the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and she read to him, Though your sins be as scarlet, you shall be as white as snow. Howard, you can get saved tonight. And he did. And not only did Howard Cato get saved, God called him to preach. He came up. He became a powerful evangelist. He took all of his knowledge that he had of the business world and converted it over to the honest business and started making money. You know what Howard Cadle did when he started making money and God started blessing him? He started giving 75% of his profits to the work of God. And he had a vision. He said, I want to build a great tabernacle. And he built it in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's called Cadle's Tabernacle. And from that place, for decades, for decades, for decades, that place was a hub of powerful preaching. And like I said, I met B.R. Lakin. I, I, I met him face to face. I talked to him before we went to heaven. I had him sign my Bible. And for years, B.R. Lakin preached in, in Cadle's Tabernacle. Hey, don't you quit praying. Amen? Let's read it. Let's read 4 and 5. Let's read them together, and let's believe this. 4 and 5. Four, everybody read it together. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's bow our heads for prayer. I don't need Miss Rebecca to come to the piano, but I would like to invite you. If you've got a, a, a dear friend, a loved one, a child, a neighbor, a co-worker, a daughter-in-law, a brother, a sister, and you're going to say tonight, by God's grace, I'm going to pray for them, and I'm going to target my praying, and I'm going to ask God to bring down some strongholds in their life and see them come to a place where pride is cast aside, their heart is open, and they're a prodigal coming home or soul being saved. If you want to come and join me in prayer, you're welcome to. If you'd like to come and sit on the front pew, if you'd like to come to the altar, if you'd like to do whatever, I invite you to come. I'm not going to pray a long time, but I do want to pray. We ought to be calling some people's names out to God. We ought to be believing God and not doubting God and trusting God. And don't forget this. God can do a lot of things that we don't think he can. And God can do things that are beyond our imagination. Heavenly Father, we love you. 
Thank you so much, God, that you allowed these verses to be included in our holy canon of Scripture. And they are a description of how we can, through prayer, bring down and pull down these strongholds where devils and demons hold people captive. And Lord, you're more mighty than, than alcohol drink. You're greater and stronger than any addictive drug. You're greater and stronger than any devilish music. You're greater and stronger than any imagination or theories or or false ideas that the devil has planted in people's minds and their hearts. Bring down, God, these strongholds. And Lord, tonight if we leave here and we're not fully aware of all these strongholds maybe in a person's life, I believe, God, the Holy Spirit can teach us and show us and reveal to us these binding sins. God, in our private place, our prayer time place, we can pray. And it's not the might of our prayers. It's the might of our Heavenly Father that can do things, that can bring people to a place like old Howard Cadle was brought to repentance and where the Lord opens their heart And what a wonderful time, God, after prayer and prayer and prayer and prayer and that stronghold goes crumbling to the ground and that heart then is opened and we see that person say, Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I need you. God, please help us to believe you Help us to trust you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for meeting with us. And God, I pray that these verses would be instructive to us and help us know how to pray and make our prayers more effective and effectual, like like James says, the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Remember, we have Bible study on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Bring your Bible. Bring a friend. Amen. Bye.